I'm heading down to the South Florida Everglades to meet up with some friends and hunt for two specific snakes. One of the most infamous invasive species in the world, and an incredibly rare native snake. One of these animals is quickly taking over the Everglades, while the other is on the decline. I'm after that Everglades Nile monitor, you know what I'm saying? Oh, they got pythons out here too, look at that. Now at this point, you've probably figured out that we're searching for the Burmese python, the massive invasive snakes that are currently numbered over 300,000 individuals for the Everglades. But what about our other snake? The native snake that we're looking for is the Brooks King Snake, a native wetland king snake that appears to be very sensitive to environmental changes. Both of these animals occupy the same habitat, but are on totally different paths and have opposing interests in the area. I started my hunt for both of these snakes the same way I always do, by finding the best habitat. Now this is some really nice habitat we're in now. Truly freshwater mangroves of the Everglades. And this is just a great area to be in. You'll see pretty much every single snake that you want to see here. And in fact, I see a snake right now. It's not a Brooks or Python. Okay, here we go. Okay, really interesting scenario, guys. I can't see the head of the snake, see that? No. Okay, there it is. Now that I see the head of the snake, I go for it. I was already 90% sure that was a green water. Now I'm 100% sure. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Big green water. Whoa. This is a great native species down here. This is a Florida green water snake. And what you guys just witnessed is what I teach in action. I followed this snake down there. And I saw it, but I only saw the very half of its body. Now I looked at that and I said I am about 90% sure that that is a green water snake just looking at the colors, just looking at the patterning. But there's always that chance that you get a weird snake. So I was like, okay, I'm not jumping for it yet. I want this snake, I'm excited about it, but I don't know what it is yet, 100% at least. I looked, I looked, I looked, and then I saw that head. I told y'all, okay, now I know what I'm looking at, I'm gonna grab it. And I grabbed it, and here we go. That is a massive Florida green. He's definitely not happy with us, so we're gonna go ahead and put this snake back, a great native species, and a great start to the evening. Big, bulky, green water. Where the marshes meet the mangroves is some of the densest Everglades habitat around. This, along with hazards like venomous snakes and swarms of biting insects. One on my wrist here. Bonk. It can make finding either of these two snakes an absolute struggle. I spent many days driving back roads and looking in every single grass patch that I could imagine these snakes being in, but no luck. That, that was a snake, that was a snake, and we're turning around, boys. I think that was a rat, too. I think it was a yellow rat. It didn't look dead. It's moved. <laughs> it's staying! It's strange! After losing my sanity for a while and wondering if it was too hot for these snakes to even be out, I saw what I thought was a funky looking water snake in the road. That is about the best snake we could have found. Oh my goodness. One of the best snakes you can see out here. That is a Brooks King aka a very special kind of Florida or Eastern King. Now they kind of just lump all the king snakes together. I don't necessarily agree with it. These guys are highly specialized. They live really specifically here in South Florida in the Everglades, which is incredible. They're a very aquatic king snake, kind of like the king snakes back home, the speckled kings, and you can see the resemblance. Almost looks like a speckled king. And as a baby, they look pretty typical, honestly. A lot of their king snake-ish looks just kind of that banding and that yellow so you really don't get to see the full extent of this snake but when they become an adult they have this very interesting pattern i'll throw up a picture of an adult right now but it's very cool it's very special looking and definitely not your average king snake that's for sure now these guys are primarily nocturnal this time of year but in the springtime winter time times like that they will be out during the day but a lot of people have regarded this snake as mostly nocturnal which is very different from our speckled kings back home now this species has been in a major decline this is a species that we know for a fact is dying out here in the everglades and the question is why why are these snakes so sensitive what changed and what is causing these snakes to vanish and other snakes like pythons to increase in population. One thing's for sure, we don't have all the answers yet. Some people have considered snake fungal disease a reason for the decline of these guys. Others have blamed fertilizer runoff. There's been a whole assortment of different theories and different ideas of why these snakes have vanished. But the truth of the matter is, all we know is that something is causing the Brooks King Snake to vanish here in the Everglades. Now an interesting fact is that skinks for the most part, little skinks, common skinks, five lines, grounds, you name it, 
have mostly vanished from areas that they used to be down here. And that's another thing that a lot of people are attributing the death of these king snakes to, is a lack of their primary food source being skinks. And then the question is, okay, well what caused the skinks to vanish? And it kind of loops back to the same question as to why these snakes are vanishing. And it's a real shame. These are one of the best snakes around. They eat venomous snakes, they're a super great species, lots of other things eat them, and they're just a really cool little guy. And as you can see, he's totally friendly. Doesn't mind me at all. The Brooks King is the perfect contrast to the Burmese python, a snake species that's meant to be here and is slowly in decline, as opposed to a snake that's not meant to be here that's on the uprise. A really incredible snake. Only thing that we could find better than this would be an adult Brooks King. Genuinely, the best snake we could have found out here. What an absolute gem. We're gonna go ahead and let him on his way. Keep looking for more. Maybe find our Burmese python, maybe find an adult Brooks King. I highly doubt it though. We could have found a dozen pythons before finding one of these little guys. That is just a special example of the biodiversity of the Everglades. What a guy. After an unbelievable night of native snakes and incredible habitat, let's go. We had a massive redirect come up for our python. I was notified that two hatchling Burmese pythons had been found in a neighborhood well outside of where they're commonly seen in the Everglades. The police were called to remove the two snakes. However, if you know anything about Burmese pythons, you know that they typically have a few more than just two babies. The next morning, we headed out of the Everglades back into the urban sprawl, where I would have to figure out why and how these pythons were even here. There's definitely gonna be a lot of them in the area, but they are not easy to find. They are incredibly camouflaged, and these snakes are so widespread in South Florida for a reason. They've gotten everywhere because of the climate, the environment, the food that's available. So any of them that can be pulled out early on, especially when they're little, can be a big deal because every single one of those pythons is going to eat a lot of food. So any that we can pull, even while they're young, is a big deal. Now this was a pretty nice neighborhood that we were going into, and if anybody around here knew I was coming to catch pythons, they would freak out and probably wouldn't sleep for a week. So I had to find a bit of urban camouflage. <laughs> Neighborhood ponds, lots of food, gardens, all of these things are good for pythons. Huge. Huge. This time of day, we're not going to see them out in the open. They're going to be in the dense stuff, so that's where I'm going to head. I can kind of ditch the hat since there's not going to be anyone else back there. and. We'll see what we can do with it. I quickly figured out that pythons were coming from a small, undeveloped lot within the center of the neighborhood. It's an area that provides everything the pythons and even native species would need to go undetected for years. Ooh, have a look at this little guy. Gotta give him a good amount of space. These little fellas can leap. This is a great native species that's really commonly found in Florida. Ooh, he's not happy with me. This is a dusky pygmy. Even though he's coiled up in ambush, ooh, he's leaving frame and I don't have help. But, wow, he's wiry. Whoa, what's that? Ooh. Pygmy rattlesnakes are a venomous rattlesnake species, but compared to other rattlesnakes, they don't have a lot of venom, obviously, because they're not a very big snake. And it's not nearly as potent as other rattlesnakes, but they're very common. Most of the snake bites, most of the venomous snake bites in Florida are contributed to this snake. I can see why, they're tiny, it's very easy to step on one, and if you get them at the right time, they can be a bit wiry. The key is to get them to balance. There we go, look, I got it as I said it. The key is to make them wanna balance. But of course, this is never something you should go and try. If you see a venomous snake, just leave it alone. Most people get bitten by venomous snakes when they're messing with them. Now, pygmy rattlesnakes are actually one of the first snakes to go in very disturbed habitat, so I'd have to reckon that the population of pygmy rattlesnakes here would be looking pretty bad. But that doesn't mean they can't bounce back with some proper management of this little forest here, but hog noses and pygmy rattlesnakes are the first two to go from areas whenever there's a very massive ecological disturbance. Now, I don't think I'd attribute any of that disturbance to other species like Burmese pythons or anything like that. I think I'd mostly contribute to habitat loss, fertilizer runoff, getting in their food, lack of food. Those are the kinds of things that are gonna affect these snakes the most. Overall, they're doing pretty good in the state. They're pretty much a dime a dozen in the right areas, but really cool to see a native species out here in this little patch of woods while we're looking for the infamous Burmese python. All right, we're gonna go ahead and let this guy on his way and keep looking for more. See you, little buddy. Looking at this habitat, I don't think there's gonna be any eastern diamondbacks to worry about, but could potentially be 
some moccasins and some other lowland species in here. You can see why the pythons like it though. Nothing else would really compete with them in here. Just like in the Everglades, the pythons here would utilize mammal burrows and palmetto brush to hide during the day. But when the babies disperse from the nest, they are much more exposed and easy to find. Snake! Burn, 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 burn! Yes! Oh, it's a baby burn! Yes! <laughs> that is straight up a hatchling. This is exactly what we were hoping to come across out here. This is a hatchling infamous species, the Burmese python. Have a look at that perfect little snake. He is gorgeous, look at him. Whoa! <laughs> These guys are feisty, straight from the egg. They are a fairly defensive species. They will try to tag you anywhere they can. They'll tag you on the face, they'll tag you on the arm. They have to imagine, I would not be laughing if this snake was a good bit bigger. Burmese pythons grow to be one of the largest snakes in the world. They're in the top five largest snake species in the world. And Burmese pythons have been known to grow upwards of 20 feet in length. In fact, the recent world record was very close to 20 feet in length. It was a huge snake and not something you'd expect to see in South Florida. But it ended up beating out the world record from just a few years ago. So it just goes to show you the snakes down there are still growing with all the different food sources that they have in the Everglades. Now, I wouldn't reckon this guy will ever get a chance to get that big. In fact, if he was very successful out here, he might get to around 9, 12 foot, which is still a very impressive and a very massive snake. That's not something that you want to be mucking around with. These snakes actually are potentially dangerous in my book. And while the biggest one that I ever caught at this exact moment was only about a seven footer, I do have experience with dealing with large snakes. If this guy bit me, wouldn't be any worry at all. Be no worse than any kind of water snake that I get bit by over here. This snake is designed for rainforest. This snake is designed for Southeast Asia. That's where these snakes are originally from, that's where they're supposed to be, and that's where they still do live. They're just not supposed to be here in South Florida. Now the reasons they've been able to survive so well in Florida is because of the tropical environment in the southern part of the state, and the vast expanse of the Everglades has given them a good hold to just hide in. They just stay in the Everglades, hidden in the marshes, hidden in the mangroves, and it's very difficult to get them out. And the other thing is the food sources here. They eat virtually everything. They eat other invasive species like iguanas and Cuban nightingales. They eat rabbits, they eat possums, they eat raccoons. Most of the Everglades mammals are in serious trouble right now. These guys would even have a go at a baby panther or even a bobcat. This is a newborn. This is tiny. Some snakes never even get this big. And they start off this big. They're super velvety, super soft. And obviously, this guy can be prey for pretty much anything out here. Other snakes, hawks, whatever you got. Oh, you're trying to bite me. Oh, you're so grumpy. What are you doing, buddy? For all the flack that these animals get, they really are gorgeous. And it is a shame. They don't belong here. They really aren't supposed to be here. And I would love to see these guys in their natural habitat over in Southeast Asia. But this, it's really not the place for them to be. So you might be asking, what do we do now? We've caught a baby python. First off, I keep looking for more. You know that there is gonna be a ton of baby pythons here for a good bit. The second thing is we report where the snake came from. Wildlife and Fisheries and the other forestry services down here are gonna to wanna to know where this snake was. They're always looking for more populations of pythons. But the third thing is I'm gonna see if our little guy here can have a bit of a different story than all of the pythons here. Protocol is important, and I want to clarify before going forward that removing these snakes from the environment is a good thing. For the sake of all the other wildlife out here, these snakes have to be removed. I still love them. This is an amazing animal, but he shouldn't be here, and he's going to kill a lot of other native species that we really need out here. And I'm going to see if we can set this guy up really nicely, but got to make sure I can do it legally first, because you are not supposed to take these guys from the environment and hold on to them in any capacity. They're supposed to be found and removed entirely. Hey man, how's it going? I'm doing good. I actually did get one. A little tiny baby. Yeah, I've got so I've got something I can easily put him in. I've, I've got a big so I've got something he can grow into. So basically, I am allowed to keep this animal specifically as an educational ambassador against his species being in Florida for conservation everywhere. And his name is Bongo. Bongo, the Burmese python. So. 
all's well that ends well. It'll be a cool thing to see how that plays out. So really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, consider subscribing and check out the last time we were in South Florida where we caught a massive python. Okay, massive is relative, seven foot. And I'll see you guys next time. All right, let's get the heck out of here. I'm sweating bullets.